All right, what the fuck is up? My name is Noah. You can find me on Twitter at no more parties. And in today's video, I'm going to be diving into one of the more interesting players in Dynasty right now, I think, Derrick Henry. What should we be doing with Derrick Henry in Dynasty? Let's get into it. <laughs> First of all, Derrick Henry is obviously in elite fantasy running back still in 2021. He only played like half the year, but he had over 900 rushing yards. He had almost 1,100 yards from scrimmage. He had 10 touchdowns. Like he was a beast from a fantasy and like raw production standpoint last season in like PPR points per game. Like he doesn't even catch that many passes, but he was the RB1 in PPR points per game, more than two points per game ahead of the second place guy, Jonathan Taylor. And then despite missing more than half of the season with a uh, broken foot, he finished as the RB22 in PPR. So he was still an RB2. You only got half a season from him. He was elite when he was playing. And I've been diving into like some rushing efficiency numbers for NFL running backs. You know, I've been doing a lot of like rookie evaluations and evaluations of college players with rushing efficiency numbers um, relative to their teammates and box counts and things like that. And I've started focusing on the NFL side of things. So I took a look at the Titans, took a look at Derrick Henry, and this is what I found. In 2021, he averaged 4.3 yards per carry, which was his lowest yards per carry output since he averaged 4.2 back in 2017 in his second year in the league. But, you know, like raw yards per carry on its own doesn't tell you that much. We don't know what the other guys in the offense are doing. We don't know if like the offense as a whole just kind of like declined a little bit. So let's dive into some of the like team relative metrics that I like to look at. And the first one, just kind of like bird's eye view, is yards per carry plus, which looks at the per carry average of every other running back on the team versus the per carry average of Derrick Henry, how far above or below the rest of the guys is he producing on a per carry basis. And in 2021, he averaged negative 0.21 yards per carry relative to the other guys on the team, which obviously is not good. It's negative. He's producing less on a per carry basis than the other running backs. And that's on a fairly like decent sized sample of carries from the other guys. Like Derrick Henry missed half the year. Deontay Foreman had over 100 carries last season as the lead back in Henry's absence. Dontrell Hilliard played a lot. He had like 50 carries. And then guys like Jeremy McNichols, Adrian Peterson um, combined for like 60 plus. So we have like a 200 plus carry sample of other guys in the team carrying the ball. It's not like Henry had the ball 400 times and everybody else had it like 30 combined. So we've got a good sample, pretty 50-50 split with like Henry and the other dudes. And he was less efficient than them on a per carry basis, just kind of bird's eye view. He did, however, see higher box counts than the other guys in the team. Just barely 0.06 more defenders on average in the box on Derrick Henry's carries versus the carries of the other Titan running backs. So it might be like a little bit reasonable that he was a little bit less efficient than them, but according to box adjusted efficiency rating, which is a metric that I developed. And basically what it looks at is a player's yards per carry versus his teammates yards per carry at each individual box count. So Derrick Henry versus other Titans running backs against four man boxes, against five man boxes, against six man boxes, etc. And then uses a weighted average based on how many carries he saw against each box count to develop a percentage based score that shows how much of the output of the other guys on the team is Derrick Henry producing on a per carry basis. And for Henry, that number in 2021 was 100.1%, which basically means that he's producing at exactly the output of the other guys on the team, given the box counts he was facing, that 0.1% obviously means like a tiny bit better. But 100% is just, he's producing at 100% their output. That's that's the same yards per carry, basically, relative to box counts. And then another metric I like to look at is relative success rate. And what success rate does is it doesn't look at an average. It looks at a binary like success or failure on each rushing attempt based on whether or not it gained a requisite amount of yards given down a distance. It's, it's more of a measure of consistency. And, you know, kind of dividing things up and, and generating a weighted average based on box counts again, Derrick Henry relative success rate, negative 1.4% relative to his teammates. So he's barely outdoing the overall efficiency of his teammates, and he's slightly less consistent than they are, given the box counts that he saw. And, you know, this is kind of like my first run through doing this thing on like a league-wide basis, looking at NFL efficiency with these box counts. And so I don't know what that looks like relative to what Derrick Henry's been doing throughout his career. I don't know if this is a good year. I don't know if this is a down year. I don't know if it's just kind of like average for, for him. 100.1% box-adjusted efficiency rating, negative 1.4% relative success rate. How good is that relative to other guys in the league? Box-adjusted efficiency rating for Derrick Henry 2021 is in the 51st percentile, which kind of makes sense. He's just barely outdoing the rest of the guys on his team. 100% is probably about average, and it is. So 51st percentile, and then relative success rate. He's barely less consistent than the other guys in the team, and he comes out in the 46th percentile on that metric. So 
right at average, right below average in those two metrics. And I didn't know how that looked relative to how Derrick Henry has performed throughout his career, so I decided to check that as well. And I'll just kind of the mouse will work. And I'll just kind of go through those other numbers from the rest of his career. So 2021, box adjusted efficiency rating 100%, relative success rate negative 1%. Starting in 2016, his box adjusted efficiency rating as a rookie when he was backing up DeMarco Murray was 104%, which is in the 57th percentile. So obviously a little bit better than this last season. That 2017 season, he was still backing up DeMarco Murray, but those next seasons, he, you know, kind of took over as the guy. 134% in 2017, 165% in 2018, 139 9% in 2019, and in 2020, 130%. Those numbers are all above the 80th percentile. That 2018 number especially is ridiculous. It's in the 98th percentile. So he's just been like absolutely elite from a team relative efficiency standpoint throughout his prime, except for his very first season and this last one. And from a consistency standpoint, relative success rate. So last year, negative 1.4%. His rookie season, 1.5%. So positive. And then throughout his prime, 13%, 16%, 5.6%, and 15%. And those numbers are all, again, at least in the 77th percentile, 2018 in the 97th percentile. So elite, elite, elite throughout his prime. A little bit worse as like a first year guy. And then this last season, easily the worst of his career. Which kind of brings me to like... How should we think about Derrick Henry in Dynasty, in redraft, just kind of like as a pure talent at this point in his career? He's getting a little bit older. He's a big dude. And one of the things that informs like how I think about like running back age curves and things like that, a really interesting article by a guy named Adam Harstad, who you should follow on Twitter. He's really smart, at Adam Harstad. That's H-A-R-S-T-A-D. He writes for football guys. But he wrote an article, I I don't remember the title, but I'll, I'll read an excerpt from it here, where he kind of looks into conventional wisdom about aging for fantasy football players and how we think about it in terms of sort of, you know, you you climb towards the age apex. You know, a guy at 21 is is at this level, he gets a little bit better at 22, a little bit better at 23, a little bit better at 24, and then, you know, at 25 or so, he starts tapering off. And then, you know, at 26, he's like 90% of what he was. Then at 27, he's 80% of what he was. Then at 28, he's 70% of what he was. And I think that's kind of sort of the way we think about things. And Adam Harstad, in his research, kind of found that that's not not really the case. So let me let me grab some excerpts from that. Um, he writes, running backs, it turns out, do tend to experience a mini decline before they fall off the cliff entirely. And he goes on to say, I like to save my mortality tables mindset, which is kind of the, the analysis he's doing here. I like to save my mortality tables mindset that it turns players into a series of coin flips. And all of this research he's doing is based on um, historical data on production of NFL running backs. So it's as if the player flips a coin before the season, and if it comes up heads, he continues on completely unaffected. So there's like a 50-50 chance that a guy is just going to be like as good the season before and then the season after. If it comes up tails, he falls off a cliff, never to be heard from again. As a player ages, the coin becomes more and more weighted toward tails, but each flip is fundamentally an independent event. So basically what that means is as a guy ages, he doesn't become like slightly worse, then slightly worse, then slightly worse until he's eventually not good. It's sort of, you know, kind of Schrodinger's cat where like either he's going to be the dude he was or he's going to be nothing. And I think, you know, kind of anecdotally, the careers of guys like Todd Gurley, David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, like we've seen this concept like bear itself out in dynasty valuation and in the on-field performance of these players. And so we're kind of left with two options here. Like number one, 2021 was just kind of like a random blip in Derrick Henry's career. And we should expect him to be the same dude in 2022 that he's been throughout his prime. He should be an elite player, elite production, elite efficiency. That's option one. Option two is that despite being really productive in the games he played in 2021, the fact that he was so inefficient relative to A, his teammates, B, relative to the player that he's been throughout his career, that that's a sign that this is the beginning of the end. Like, he's a big guy. It's tough for big guys in all sorts of sports to, like, have long careers. Number two, he's over the age apex. He's 27 years old now. Number three, he broke his foot. You know, this is the least healthy season of his career. I know he came back and played in the playoffs, but he wasn't good in the playoff game. He averaged like three yards a carry. So he got hurt. And even while he was healthy during the season, it was the worst season of his career from an efficiency standpoint. So either it was random that he was worse than he's ever been this last season, or it's a sign despite his, you know, kind of continued like fantasy production, raw production, the low efficiency is a sign that he's declined and that we should probably get out while we still can. And... 
kind of like looking at his dynasty value right now, as of January, according to DLF ADP, startup ADP, as of January, he was being taken in the early fourth round at pick 37 and the RB 16. And as of February, which other than two guys who took him at like the two spot and the five spot, which if you are taking Derrick Henry at the 102 in a dynasty startup, fine God. But as of February, he was being taken in the mid third, pick 29 as the RB 14, which means among the players going after him are Chris Godwin, DJ Moore, Elijah Moore, Travis Etienne, Michael Pittman, and Jerry Judy. I think I'm going with those other guys. Even in redraft leagues, you know, we don't care as much about age in redraft leagues, but he's going at the 4.5, the fourth player on the board overall, as the RB3. And part of this whole equation is that, like, the Titans' identity is so tied up in who Derrick Henry is as a player. Like, they're a smash mouth team. He's a smash mouth player. Like, he is the Titans. That it's completely possible for him to, like, be relatively ineffective on a per touch basis, for him to have, like, declined physically and not be as efficient as he was, and to still have a productive fantasy season despite not being the player he quite was. Like, he could have, you know, a 1,000 yard season at four yards a carry and be okay for your fantasy team despite being a lesser player. But I think, as we saw with Todd Gurley and Le'Veon Bell, and like guys like that from the past, it's much better to be out early than late on these aging running backs. So the inefficiency and the residual value that Derrick Henry still has is just a gift, man. Like if if he completely fell off last year, you'd be fucked. But he didn't. He still produced despite inefficiency. And it's just like he whispered in your ear, like, I'm almost done. Like, don't draft me again. Like, get out now. And you you got to take that advice. Like, David Johnson didn't tell you that. Todd Gurley didn't tell you that. Le'Veon Bell didn't tell you that. And if you're holding those guys when they fell off, you're fucked. You don't want to get fucked by Derrick Henry. <laughs> like, probably in more ways than one. But I think it's clear. It's a coin flip season coming up. And indicators from 2021 are that Derrick Henry is toast. You got to fade him in redraft. You got to fade him in dynasty. Get out now. He's done. Yeah.